first time doing spine waves in quite a while actually. Because I do my spine waves in my flow handstand and hanging workout. I haven't been doing that for a while. So a bit rusty. This is the hard one. Definitely rusty at this one. This is a really good one as well. It's really important with spine mobility to you think of all of the different things that your spine can do. And you know, rotation is one of them. So we need to be doing rotation, flexion, extension, lateral flexion, and all different versions of it. And anybody that's got the 20 minute mobility routine, you'll know we start with some really basic spine mobility. And then in the flexibility masterclass is where we start getting to this more advanced stuff. And then I also do a little bit of lateral flexion. Because this is really, really good. Now I do uh, three sets of hanging, but I pair it with some other mobility work, just to be more efficient rather than, you know, doing one set of hanging and then resting and then doing another set of hanging and then resting. I always try to do active recovery. so instead of just sitting there doing nothing while I'm recovering, doing some form of mobility or some form of exercise that doesn't dramatically hinder my ability to recover before I do my next set. First set is always pretty tight. Everything warms up after the first round. People often ask me if you should do a warm up before flexibility training. And the answer is maybe. Because it depends on how much time you've got and what you want to do. Like the short answer is 
yes, you'll get a better result with your flexibility training when you do a warm up first. But then it depends on how much time you've got because this workout for me is going to take close to two hours. Depends on how much I mess around and how much I go from one exercise to the next. And so that's long enough. Like I've got, I do two workouts a day. I've got a lot of other stuff to do. And adding a 10 or 15 minute warm up to this, it's just, it's too much. So yeah, I can get a better result on my first round if I warm up first, but then I miss out on 15 minutes of training time. So I, when I'm doing my full workouts, I warm up before strength training, definitely, that's different. But for flexibility training, you know, the stuff that I'm already doing has warmed me up for my exercise, so that's good enough. All right, the good old diagonal stretch. This one's my nemesis. Hip flexors are the tightest part of my body. So I'm not great at this. When I learned this from Ido Portal, he did it really differently. You did this rotation in your body when you do it. But my teacher, Roy Gold, taught, was very specific. He wanted me to do it this way. So this is why I'm doing it this way. Oh, such a brutal burn in the old hip flexors. Setups, most important for anything. Really got to pay attention to the way you set up. Because if you set up incorrectly and then start doing your set, you're almost guaranteed to be doing your reps incorrectly. So pay attention to your setup on everything. Oh man. Woo. I messed up. I was meant to do my single arm hang transitions before the diagonal stretch, but it doesn't matter. I'll do it now. If I could only get one piece of equipment at home, in a home gym, it would be a good pull-up bar, by far. That would be number one for me.
lot better at this. Last year I could barely hold 90 seconds and now I'm consistently holding more than that, which is really good. My hands, the calluses used to just kill me, but I'm getting stronger. I've been working on like gripping with that part of your hand instead of the whole thing. Not always, like when I do pull-ups, I grip like that. But when I do hanging like this, I grip the other way so it's my fingers, not the knuckles there, taking the weight. And it was so hard at first, I was so weak. But my body's adapted and I'm much stronger now, which is really good. And I'm coming up to three minutes. Let's see if I can get three minutes. Good. Oh, I'm a bit weaker here today. stretch is my nemesis for my upper body it's this lat tricep insertion stretch
Oh, that is brutal. So this year I told myself after I've done that flexibility workout, so three days a week I do that routine because I've just done my shoulder flexibility for shoulder flexion like that, that I would start testing my back bridge again. And I didn't do any back bridge work for four years because after a slap tear, like I could barely get my arms past here. I should say after two slap tears and uh, back bridge was just completely out of the question. So here goes, it's nothing like what I used to be able to do it. But the fact that I can even push up here again is a big step forward. So it's all about trying to get your shoulders over your hands. Oh, that's challenging. So, huge problem that people make post-traumatic injury, like a slap tear is a traumatic shoulder injury. And I see people, people comment on my YouTube videos all the time, saying like, oh, I've had a slap tear and I just can't do a back handspring anymore. And it's really, you know, upsetting me. And every time I try, my shoulder just gets so much worse. Of course you can't do a back handspring. Back handspring is like one of the most aggressive, advanced things that you could do and you used to be able to do it, sure. So your mind goes, I used to be able to do that, I should be able to do it. But that was before you had a slap tear. That was before you had a traumatic injury in your shoulder. So you have to completely reset what you think you can do. And like going, like that and putting weight in your arms. I mean, this is just an example. Like for me, a back bridge. Like I got a really good back bridge. If you look at any of my photos or videos of me doing a back bridge before slap tears, I had a pretty good back bridge. But once I had that slap tear, I just had to go, well, eh, back bridge is gone for me, at least for now. Like I can't even come close to doing a back bridge. And that's so much better than I was like a year ago. I tested it once or twice. I was, I was horrible at it. And then when you take that smart approach of building up, you know, and you work on, you know, strengthening what you've got, and then you expand that a little bit and strengthen that. And before you know it, you know, here I am four years later and I'm able to start doing the back bridge again. Go the other way and you might think, oh, that's four years. That's ridiculous. Well, that mentality is going to keep you injured and it's going to ensure that in four years you're worse than you are now. Because if you, can't, if you can't fully leave your ego at the door and just accept that you fucked yourself up doing some, whatever it was, you know, for me it was calisthenics movements that I just wasn't strong enough for. If you cannot just really embrace that and say, well, I've done this thing and I, and I now have to do what I didn't do before, which is really prepare my body so that I can do the things that I want to do, then it just, it doesn't end well. And I've very, very, very rarely seen somebody make the kind of recovery that I've made. And I'm not saying they're not out there. I'm just saying I haven't worked with a lot of people that have done that. Most of the people that I've worked with, they just, they can't detach that ego. They can't accept that, you know, this, even though they used to be able to do this, that's out of their realm now. And they need to focus on, you know, X, Y, and Z to get back to there.
So I did, I did 39 seconds for all five sets in my last workout. But, did I actually? Let me review. This is one of the reasons why it's so important to use an app like the UMS app because I can look at my past effort and I can see I actually didn't get 39 seconds. I got 38 seconds for all five sets. But because I got 38 seconds for all five sets, you can see the workout before I got 37 seconds for all five sets. And that's how you use progressive overload with handstands and isometric training. If you get all five sets, then you go up by one to two seconds per set. So this workout, I'm aiming for 39 seconds. So I'm gonna try all five sets, 39 seconds. And if I get them all, I go to 40 seconds. And I'm feeling good. All right, here we go for round three. It's getting harder at round three, but I think I'm gonna get all my five rounds. All right, made it to the fifth round, so see if I can get 39 seconds. Well, I got it, but it was very wobbly at the end, as I'm sure you could see. So I'll stay on 39 seconds until I can really lock that last set in. Might take me a couple of workouts, maybe a week. But you don't want to push the volume up until you can control the volume that you're currently doing. It's a big mistake a lot of people make. Oh, it is tough to <laughs> it's tough <laughs> at this stage in the workout. Oh, it's 
hard getting you know, getting this flow work done when you're already this fatigued. But it's fulfilling. Well, for me it is. I like the pursuit of mastery. And it's important to work on things that you're not good at. It's important to not just stay in the realm of things that you're good at. And only Okay. One more set and then I'll finish round one. Three rounds. Sticking to the prescribed rest time, that's the hard part. But you gotta do it. It's been such a journey for me to get strength in my shoulders to be able to do this stuff. It's funny when I think back on how far I've come with it. It was very disheartening for me when I, because I was, you know, good at Kung Fu when I started doing calisthenics and movement training. So I had good leg strength. Flexibility wasn't nearly as good as it is now. It was one dimensional, but I had no strength in my upper body. It was very humbling. And there's just no hiding weaknesses or imbalances with movement training or calisthenics. Just can't get away from it. Just doing things like handstands and um, trying to do planche work, which is 
how I did my two slap tears. It's you just um, yeah, you just can't get away from it. If you don't have the strength, you do not get the results. And if you try to force it like I did, you get injured. All right, here we go. Oh, it adds up. I found when I wasn't, with anything I do, when I wasn't tracking reps and sets on every set, I'd forget what set I was on or how many reps I'd done or, and it's just, it's inaccurate. It's not, you can't use progressive overload um, accurately and hit a lot of plateaus, you know. I think you try and force, because you think, oh, I've been doing this for ages, I should be better. So you try and force yourself doing better and then you get injured. That's what I did anyway. All right, last set. And then the next one. So many little things to get your head around. 
with movement training, like with anything like that's movement based. If you want to do martial arts, like Kung Fu, like what I did or whatever, or flow like this, like the way your arm moves, the way you place your hand, the way your feet come off the ground. And you've got to try and do all that when you're exhausted because another part of it is you've got to build up endurance. A lot of it is about endurance, having the endurance to be able to do it. funny you feel like a real unco when you're doing this stuff in the learning phase but you get better you know This one was terrible. <sighs> the next move that I'm practicing after this one is one of my favorites. It's a very acrobatic movement, like a flip. A lot of fun. It was a one of those movements when I got shown by Roy the first time. I was very excited to learn it because I'd seen him do it a lot in his videos. Definitely some free cardio in this stuff, which is good. I still feel pain and discomfort sometimes in my slap tear, especially the one on the right side. That was much worse than the one on the left. People ask me, does that ever stop? It hasn't for me, but most of the time I don't feel anything. But, you know, often I'll feel something in the, in the bicep and it's that sensation that's it's quite scary, you know, when you've had the slap tear. But, you know, when I've spoken to my physio friends, they say it never goes away. It's just, you know, you just learn to manage it. It doesn't get worse if you do the right things at least. <laughs>
yet. It doesn't, when I, it's funny, when I started doing pike push-ups again recently, I got a real bad muscle pain up my bicep that was very, you know, very much associated with the slap tear. But it didn't scare me or worry me because I understand it so well now. So what I did, I, you know, I really pushed that fourth rep. So I dropped back to three reps. I stopped that workout there. And then next workout, I dropped back to three reps, which felt easy. I did three reps for a couple of weeks, and I did four reps, and then five reps, and it all felt easy. And now I'm doing eight reps per set, and now I'm very close to actually moving on to the next progression. So, yeah, it's, it's all just about using progressive overload and following a process that works. You know, the reason I got such a good result with my slap tear recovery is that I was working with physios that could guide me and that created the shoulder rehab programs that we now customise to our members. All right, I'm in the last round. Whew. Yeah, so. If you've got an injury, if you're watching this, because we've got rehab programs for knees, hip, lower back, shoulders, golfers elbow and tennis elbow, they're all injuries that my brother and I have had and rehabilitated. And if you follow, you know, a good progressive overloading and periodized program, you'd be amazed at what you can achieve if you just shelve your ego and just commit to the process. One more set, and I'm on to my last flow movement. Okay. Okay. All right, momentum hook.
fuck, it's hard to produce best effort at this stage. Okay. Ah. One of the best ways to relieve neck pain. Turn your head to the side. Look up for 10 breaths because we spend so much of our time going like that. That that simple movement can really help reverse it. Oh, feeling it now. Really got to bring up my left side, but that's the whole journey, you know? So fatigued at this stage. Oh, come on. Come on. Okay. Next set.
Every rep, you gotta try and be better. Doesn't matter how, how fatigued you are, you gotta try. Do the best you can do, every rep. Trying to do your best as well, it doesn't always mean like jumping higher or moving faster or pushing harder or going quicker. It means really everything that you have to do to be good, you know. In, this, in these flow movements, it's not about speed, it's about, it's about this, the smooth transitions and transitioning weight from one arm to the other and then at the right time you jump and then you try to come down gently and always got to try for that best effort. I think this will have been one hour and 50 minutes in total by the time I'm finished. Last reps were some of my best ones. That's what I wanted. Good way to finish. And I'll see you in this afternoon's strength and flexibility workout.